Hello, this is the 11th Kiwi Crash Course video. This time, I'm going to talk about Kiwi's clock and the related topic of its animation system that makes certain kinds of scheduled events much easier. The general sort of question here is, what if we want to do something at some point in the future? That could be a one-off, like maybe we want a time trial in our game that stops after a few seconds. Or it could be a regular event, like updating the position and speed of a character in a game, which you'd probably want to do at least every frame. Rather than talking a lot beforehand, I thought I'd just dive in by demonstrating two different ways to have some widgets move around, which will cover a couple of different ways to think about the problem. I've already quickly set up an app to demonstrate this, as you see here. Uh, nothing special, it's just a red rectangle and a green rectangle, each of which I'm going to move. Just to show you the code quickly, as usual, I put a downloadable version in the video description, so you can download and follow along if you want. It is very simple. I've made a root widget, which just contains a red background widget, and a green background widget. The first thing I'm going to do in the program, in this program, is say, what if I want this first rectangle, the red one, to move sort of physically, moving around and bouncing off the walls if it hits them? That means we'll need to frequently check its position to see if it's leaving the screen, and reverse its velocity if that's uh, in that direction if it's doing so. Let's add a few properties and a method to keep track of that. So that's one I've called clock rect. We'll give it a velocity. Velocity is list property, not not. Let's not forget to import the list property from kiwi.prog. Go to pen spell, import list property. And in fact, let's give it a specific velocity, say 10 and 15. Nothing special, just so it will move. Now we we'll need a method that will perform the movement for us, so def update. Uh, it needs to first move the widget, self.x plus equals self.velocity not, self.y plus equals self.velocity1. So that does the first bit of movement. Now we need to check if the widget is leaving the window in either direction. So if self.x is less than not, or if self.x plus self.width is greater than the window width, we can do self dot velocity naught times equal minus one to reverse it. We also need to import the window from kiwi dot core dot window import window. Uh, the window is just a class keeping track of things about the window. The only ones we care about here are the width and the height. That does the x direction for us. We also need to do y, so we need to replace width with height. And x is with y's. So that seems to be everything. The update method is very simple. Just means if we leave the window, we need to uh, reverse our velocity. The final bit, the important bit for the video, is we need to actually schedule this to happen frequently. Say every sixteenth of a second, it will happen every frame, and move the widget every frame. We'll put that in the init method. Super self dot init. Always pass the keyword arguments through. And then the syntax for the clock scheduling is clock.schedule interval some function and some time period. That is, that function will be called every time that amount of time passes. For us, our function is going to be self.update. Our time period is going to be oops, one sixtieth of a second. We could also do clock.schedule once to do something just once, but obviously that's not what we want here, though the syntax will be the same. That seems like everything, though. We've made the widget, we've given it this update method that can uh, update its position according to its velocity, and now the clock should automatically manage its movement for us. Seems to work perfectly. The red rectangle is now moving around and bouncing off the sides of the screen whenever it hits them. That's great, and you can always implement time period things using the clock like this. What you'd find starting from scratch, though, is that a lot of tasks need basically the same use of the clock. For instance, moving a widget from one specific place to another will be very common in any kind of animated graphics. But perhaps you'd also want to do so non-linearly, not just moving at a constant rate. Of course, we can create this behavior with an appropriate clock scheduled function, but actually Kiwi has an animation system that's designed to deal with exactly this. Specifically, it lets us animate Kiwi properties so if the graphics handle stuff like... So if the graphics depends on them, then the graphics will update appropriately. 
It also handles things like composing multiple simultaneous or sequential animations, hiding away the clock backend in a much simpler interface. So let's apply that to our green rectangle, the one I've called animrect. And this time we're going to give it a method called def anim to random pos. What we need to do is make a random position that we're going to move it to. We don't need to care about anything in between, just the end point. So let's import an appropriate random function from random import random. That gives a random number between 0 and 1. So then we can do random x position is random, uh, random between 0 and 1 times window.width minus self.width. That just means whatever the new x position is, it will leave space for the widget still to fit on the screen. We can do the same for y, random y equals this is the same, but we'll replace width with height. Seems reasonable. Now we can make an animation, anim is animation, and the syntax is that we specify a key property, in this case x, is going to change to random x. The animation itself will check the current value of x and schedule the change to this new value over whatever time period we give. We can also pass in y, y equals random y. Animation can perfectly well handle animating more than one property at once. And we can specify that duration as duration equals, say, four seconds, just so we can see what's going on. We can also set a transition function, which is something more interesting. I'm going to use t equals out elastic. And the point here is that you might want to animate with all sorts of different functions. It could just be linear, moving at some constant rate to the new position. It could be like a sine curve or something, or an exponential curve. Or in this case, out elastic will sort of bounce around the endpoint before settling on it. This is all handled by the animation function. We don't have to care about any of the details. It'll do it for us. And that's one of the reasons you might want to use an animation. We can now start it on our self, anim.start self. Note that the animation is not specific to our animrect widget. We could start it on any other widget or any other number of widgets, and that would work fine. Uh, though here we just discard it. And let's also cancel any existing animations before doing any of this. That's not necessarily important, but just means when we call this animation function, we'll cancel any existing animation if it's already moving, so it doesn't interfere with the new movement. The final part is we actually want to call this method, and let's say we want to call it when we click on our rectangle. The syntax again is very simple, though I haven't shown it before. Def on touch down, self and some touch. This applies to mouse movements too, they count as touches as far as this is concerned. And what we do is if self.collide point touch.position uh, self.am to random pause. As simple as that. Uh, we do have to always do this collide point part because we do receive touches even if they don't collide with our rectangle, but that's not useful to us here. If you're interested in the touch input, you can also experiment with the onTouch move and onTouch up functions, which have the same uh, definition, but then you can do things with different uh, interactions with your touch. Though again, we don't care about that here. That seems to be everything though. If we click on the rectangle, it will run an animation function and hopefully do the animation. So let's try it. The red one's still bouncing around as before, but now we can click the green rectangle and it picks a new random position and bounces to it. As I mentioned, although the end position is within the window, the animation function kind of overshoots and then bounces back again, ending up at that final position. And that's what's part of what's handled by the animation. Uh, you can change that t, the transition parameter, to different values if you want to see different things that you could have done. And of course, you can check the Kiwi animation documentation online for all the different options.